Hey, um, today I'm going to walk you through my editing process for these vlogs that I create. Um, I'm going to take you from beginning to end, um, starting with the footage from my phone and ending with the export on Final Cut Pro. Um, it's going to be really simple. I'm doing it on Apple Vision Pro. I want to show you the benefits and disadvantages that it has. Um, and I will literally take you from the very beginning of when I start to when I finish. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I'm going to do is stop you recording over there. <laughs> and then I'll open up my computer. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I just look at the computer, and usually, if it's working properly, there will be a little thing that pops up. But while I'm waiting for that to get all set, I will um, go to my iPad here, where I have um, a bunch of videos from uh, last night. And I'm going to go ahead and airdrop it to my computer. So while that's downloading, looks like this isn't popping up actually. So I'll go ahead and just, I'm gonna see if it does it. I would say that this is one of the buggier features of Apple Vision Pro. Um, true of any continuity feature, honestly, on most Apple devices where when it works, it's kind of amazing. When it doesn't, you have to find a way around it. So one way is by going here and then clicking on uh, screen mirroring to my Apple Vision Pro. The other way is by going up to this and then having it open Mac virtual display from control center. And maybe I'm just having issues connecting in the first place because it's not showing up here either. So let's go ahead and try and initiate it from the computer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open it here, click on Apple Vision Pro. And look at that, voila, shows up. So I, um, it, Maybe I should do that again, actually. Um, so first of all, you can see that it shows up here. I have it open up to Finder. I'm gonna turn it off again, just for a second. And um, the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna show you just what it looks like when it opens up, because I think it's a kind of an interesting little tidbit. Um, so notice when it comes up, it's nice and big. This is like the size, this is bigger than my 4K TV. It sh it's about, uh, well, as far as I know, um, Apple has said that this is essentially a 4K, equivalent of a 4K display. Um, I will say that the text is not perfectly sharp when I'm looking at it. I'm uh, spoiled in the sense that I'm used to looking at Apple Retina displays, which uh, scale proportionally to uh, the way that they represent it logically on the computer. Um, so a big thing for editing is that it's not gonna, in my opinion, it is not the best display to edit on quite yet. I hope that in the future that they'll be able to uh, figure out a low latency way to transfer a 5K display to these uh, um, um, screens. Because I think that when I've watched like really high quality uh, movies and things like that, and we'll get to that later, um, it has been great, but this is too big for me. It's essentially like having a TV on my desk, which is great in some respects. Like I can open things up here, right? And it's reasonable um, and I can make things smaller and kind of utilize the space. But to me, it feels a little overwhelming to try and get things in the right locations. Um, <laughs> Misa loves it when I start uh, talking. That's when she always comes up and says, hello, come on, come here. It uh, looks like this is transferring right now, come on. Come here. Come on. This is a huge, this is a really important part of the editing process is getting your lap dog. Um, okay. So I position it in front of me like this and I usually make it a little smaller so that way it feels a little bit m closer to like a 24 or 27 inch display. I don't know exactly how big it is. In fact, this is a little small. Make it a little bit bigger. Um, but already you can see the flexibility is a huge advantage in this scenario. So I'll go and open up back to my finder window and you can see that uh, the airdrop is almost complete. So one thing to know about my vlog process is that it's basically entirely done on Apple products. I record on my phone in 4K. Uh, it's an iPhone 14 Pro, yes. Yes. 
And then <laughs> the reason I do uh, the airdrops and kind of like the media management from my iPad is because number one, I like having the bigger screen to kind of work from. And number two, my iPad simply has, I got the cheapest iPhone 14 Pro that I could. And so um, I am, uh, <laughs> I got the cheapest iPhone 14 Pro that I could, and so I uh, don't have a lot of space on there. And so my iPad has just a lot more space. Uh, and so I like to do a lot of the previewing here, and when it's done, that's basically the end of its role in the process. Um, just another tidbit, I actually also record my audio on here, oftentimes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these and drag them. Well, actually, I'm gonna go and create a new folder here. And you can see that this is just like using my Mac. Otherwise, I am uh, gonna go ahead and drop them over to this folder. And then I will go over to Final Cut Pro and make it a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna make a new event, um, title it according to my system. And then I just take these over and really simply drop them in to my uh, event here. Uh, for each e each event in my process here represents a vlog. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go up and create a new project within that event. And again, <laughs> if you uh, have used Final Cut Pro, at this point, there's not a lot to learn. It's all the same idea. Uh, I'm gonna call this one, uh, well, it's, it's a study with me video. Um, This is one that will be going up in the future. It's kind of a more relaxed version. If you watch my previous one, it's very, it's like this, very kind of like professional at my desk. I've got things set up and in, 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 uh, uh, very orderly fashion. This one is more like I'm kind of leaning back on my couch over there and uh, doing some of my computing in that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and name it that and hit okay. And then my process is I did two intro takes here. I liked the second one better, I remember. And uh, I tried to do some FaceTime recordings, which didn't work, unfortunately. Um, so we've just got these three, I think, actually. Yeah, it's just gonna be these three for now. And my vlog process is really simple. I almost always shoot nearly exactly chronologically. So I just take those, drop them into my timeline and start editing. So um, this is not a video where I'm gonna teach you how to use Final Cut Pro. <laughs> I expect you that you already know, but if you're curious about my process, this is what it looks like, so. <laughs> wow, it's flashing. So I was really surprised there and, uh, to see what the eyesight looked like in the mirror. I know that I say some stuff here. An hour or so, so let's have some fun, thanks. And then I know at the end there, I actually didn't end up doing what I thought I was going to do. Um, and so here, what I want to do is start the music a little early. Let's go and preview. If people like listening to music with me and studying with me and kind of seeing how I work in the headset. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. And um, it'll probably be an hour or so. So, um, let's have some fun. so you can see that my editing process is very simple. Here are some things that uh, I'm just uh, now realizing that I'm kind of vocalizing this to you. Great thing about this is the nice, uh, it, the fact that I can make this pretty relatively big and that the actual preview screen is uh, nice, centered and large for me and that I have the space for my media, for my inspector and for my timeline uh, all uh, uh, without feeling cramped. It's better than editing on the Mac as far as space goes. Here is the other thing. It is not crisp. It's just simply not crisp. Um, and that might be surprising to some people, right? That you might think that, oh, well, you know, um, you'd expect a fork, it, be, it to be a 4K display and that the text would be perfectly crisp and that the, the corners would, would look great on these uh, um, um, rounded rectangles that are the, the windows. Um, but the reality is that it's actually not fantastic. So for the sake of this video, that's all the editing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and go up to export um, I'm gonna go ahead and it's been a very long time since I have uh, um, 
learned the proper export settings <laughs> for YouTube. So if I'm if I'm totally wrong here, call me out in the comments. Uh, but uh, more importantly, this is all I'm going to have for this video. And I'm going to go ahead and export this. And while we wait, I will uh, go ahead and kind of continue talking to you. Um, so yeah, it's not perfectly crisp. And that might be surprising to some people. And it is a little disappointing. But I will say for rough cuts, it's f a fantastic uh, uh, thing to use, in my opinion. Um, so, so one th other thing to know is that while I export, um, it you know Final Cut Pro has this sharing little bar. And if I want to, a lot of times I will continue working on my Mac. And I'll go over here to my uh, Zellocast in and Obsidian and, uh, you know, maybe poke around and continue working on something while this exports. But more often than not, actually, I, I minimize the window to a, an extremely small size, especially for a 4K display. And I kind of put it over to the side and I can just barely see it here. And in the meantime, I can go through and open up other apps, right? I can uh, uh, do some of my brainstorming on here. I can watch YouTube videos on here. I can open up the App Store and browse, right? Um, and it's just nice to be able to kind of have, know that my computer's chugging away using its full power to um, export that. Oh, hi. Or I can play with my doggy. Um, you wanna go? Okay, go, go. Um, that I can use this to uh, just, you know, kind of screw around or uh, keep myself uh, idle while I do things. Oh, she really she really wants something. While this exports, which is the, really the point. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this export and show you the last part of my editing process uh, after it's done. Because there's one other thing that the Vision Pro has totally changed for me uh, that does affect my editing process much more than this virtual display does. I'll say for a fact that this virtual display honestly does not affect my editing process a ton. Uh, and a lot of that is because of the resolution of the screen, that, that the virtual Mac screen in front of me. Um, but there's one part after and it's right after this export. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so um, my video has exported now. Um, it is uh, um, 1080p, <laughs> this one is 34 minutes long. And um, one thing you can do is watch it here, which is one of the things that I really like is that I can preview it on a big screen, make this even bigger and have a nice large 4K screen that I am previewing my uh, videos on for my Mac. The one thing about that is that this, uh, the sound does not get routed through the Apple Vision Pro. It gets routed through the Mac speakers and there's no way to change that to my understanding. You can put in AirPods, um, but there's no way to get it to go through the Apple Vision Pro itself. So one thing I like to do is to um, airdrop it. And um, when I airdrop it, you can see that this little uh, notification comes up and it tells me that it's receiving the video. And you'll see here that one reason I like to do this is because then I can go over and kind of relax and lounge on my, uh, my couch here. And after it's done sharing, which will be in a second here, I like to preview it on a big screen. Now, the reason I like to do that and preview it on a big screen is because there is something about watching media in an isolated environment where it takes up the entirety of your um, senses, especially your field of view, right? That makes things, uh, make you more attuned and more, not critical, but more aware and mindful of what you're actually watching. This is why people have been going to the movies for years. And this is why movie screens have gotten bigger and more profound and with better sound. It's nothing new, but in a personal setting, it's something very interesting. It's also actually nothing new when I talk about it in the context of the Apple Vision Pro. Many other reviewers have talked about how good of a media experience this is, but I'm just incorporating that strength of the device into my workflow for editing. So you'll see that I just received it and it automatically pops it up on my 
uh, screen and it automatically dimmed my environment. And as it loads, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's make uh, uh, the environment a dark environment and then dial it in. And now it's, <laughs> wow, it's flashing. Wait, you can I'm gonna go and close up my Mac screen. Through there. It, sorry, I just realized that. Um, but, sorry that the next So you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and let it play, but I'm gonna mute myself. You can see how this is this huge, I'm gonna say, it, I don't know, it's 15 plus feet, 20 feet maybe, 30 feet, uh, in terms of like the size of the screen. I can make it even bigger than this. Like I can make this thing huge. This is actually one of the reasons I like this environment in particular is because you can put it down almost below where you are. In fact, I'm gonna make it a little smaller if I can. This is one thing I have noticed actually is that the, uh, on the newest update, the um, resizing is not perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it nice and big, not too big, this is about the size that I make it. And then I will hit play and I will just sit here and observe and sometimes what I like to do is open up a note uh, and start taking notes with a keyboard and say this is an edit at um, this minute and this second that I need or uh, up the music at this time or something like that. So one thing to know about my videos is that they end up being kind of made for Apple Vision Pro viewing, which is inherently different than viewing it on your phone, right? Many directors talk about how they don't want you to watch your movies on your phone because again, the experience and actually some of the framing is different than you would, that is different in the context of a large screen then you would inherently choose on a small screen, if that makes any sense. So I'll uh, go ahead and dial it out. And after I'm done with this, I would go ahead and uh, delete the video. Um, I just go up here and hit delete. And then uh, I would go back to my computer and I would upload it. But uh, since I said that today, we're just gonna be about those things. Uh, I just wanna thank you for watching. And um, I hope that this was helpful. I know people have been asking me for a uh, video where I talk about my editing process in Apple Vision Pro and whether it was worth it. And to me, uh, it, I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, set of trade-offs for some real great benefits like this previewing at the end and some more muddled benefits kind of like I talked about in the middle with the size of the screen and the, the screen real estate as opposed to the screen fidelity. I almost always go back and take the Vision Pro off and preview it on Final Cut Pro on my uh, Retina MacBook display, much smaller, but much, with much higher fidelity before I hit export and before I do this previewing over here. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, and I will uh, have one more of these kind of Indivision Pro headset videos this week before we go back to a more kind of narrative and historical view next week. Thanks for watching.